Hi, this is Mo Volans, back for Tuts Plus with another Logic Pro X quick tip. I've been concentrating on quite a few administrative uh, type tutorials here uh, that concentrate on workflow and routing and stuff like this. And this is one, another one for Logic Pro X uh, that really is about setup. And sometimes these, are, these things are just as important as, you know, the exciting production tips uh, to make sure that your workflow is right and to make sure everything's uh, firing on all cylinders. So let's say you've got these synthesizers that are multi-timbral, multi-timbral and multi-output. So they're capable of working uh, on several different MIDI channels or they're capable of triggering several different parts at once and routing those to individual outputs on Logic's mixer. Um, or indeed hardware outputs out of the back of your interface. Now, obviously, these synths are generally a bit more in-depth, a bit more complex uh, than your standard sort of straight-up synths. Uh, let's just create a, a stereo synth just to show you the difference, really. Um, and I'm just going to get rid of all this out of the side here. So let's say uh, we've been looking at the core Poly 6, pretty simple synth, um, just stereo. And you can see when I picked that, I did it quite quickly. But if I go to Korg again and pick Poly 6, it just says stereo, okay? But if we, for instance, go to Omnisphere, Spectrosonics, Spectrosonics Omnisphere, you'll see there's a stereo version and a multi-output version. So that generally the multi-output multi -output synths are multi timbral as well. I mean, th there's no real rule of thumb there, but you know, these, these synths that are capable of multi-outputting um, different streams are generally capable of doing it across several MIDI channels. So something like Native Instruments Contact is a good example is of loads of different multi-output um, selections you can make. Lots of surround options and different stereo options and even 16 mono outputs if you want to make a sort of a huge drum machine or something. Um, another good example is something like the virus, the access virus. Uh, I've got a TI uh, keyboard here, TI2 keyboard here. And um, you saw I picked the three times stereo version there as opposed to the, the standard stereo. So this is definitely the multi-output version. Um, and also, you can see that it's capable of 16 parts. Now, in Logic, if I just select it like that, yes, I can use the, the different uh, outputs, but how do I trigger it across different MIDI channels? So when you're creating a multi-timbral instrument, you need to do it from this area here. And this is sort of where you can create the different parts and the different amounts of parts. So click the multi-timbral option. Let's say we want, I don't know, it can do 16, but I don't think I want 16. Let's say with six, okay? I mean, generally enough. Um, I don't think I've ever used 16 parts out of it. When you create a new synth, strangely, Logic decides to create a, sort of a default electric piano. I think you can change that in the preferences. But I'm just going to go ahead and go to Virus TI, multi-output. Now, just before I do this, it's important that you sort of separate multi-timbral with multi-output. Multi-timbral means multi-voice, it's running across multiple MIDI channels, so multi multiple parts that can be triggered separately. Multiple output is how many stereo streams we can get out of the instrument. So these are two separate things, and you've really got to understand the division between them. So I'm going to pick the uh, multi-output version. It's just connecting to the keyboard here in its own good time. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so now we've got access to these first uh, it's still called electric piano, by the way, but you can just call them uh, virus one. Uh, sorry, that would be virus two. And go ahead and name them like this. But I'm just going to do the first couple. So now what you'll see is if I go ahead and just play some chords on the first part, you can see that first part being triggered. If I go to part two, you can see the second part being triggered. Now, it's, it's not you know that obvious because uh, I've got different presets loaded. Uh, sorry, the same preset loaded. But if we go to part one, big pad, part two, bass part. So if we decided we wanted to now output those out of different outputs on the mixer, I would want to go to the mixer. And there's a little plus minus sign down here, okay? I we're going to just add the three, um, the three parts that we chose in the first place. This is the full... Uh, spread of parts that the, the virus is capable of and then you can go ahead and you can route these uh, to different outputs so let's route this base part to usb two left and right and now if i go to the second part you'll see it's coming out of that part here that output and if i go to the first part our string is coming out of the first part the first output 
So not only can we trigger different MIDI parts, and by default, by the way, any part will come out of the first uh, two outputs, but we can also route them to these multiple outputs. Like I say, in contact, you could have 16 stereo outputs, I think, in total. So you can have a massive amount of flexibility. Not only can you work across a multi-timbral range of uh, MIDI channels, but you can have all these uh, different outputs as well, if your computer can handle it. <laughs> uh, but there's just a quick tip on how to set up multi-timbral, multi-output instruments in Logic Pro 10. Hopefully this is some use to you if you're a Logic Pro user or thinking about coming over. If not, let me know. Let me know what you prefer to see or if there's anything else you'd like to see. Cheers for now.